Liverpool get busy on deadline day. Chelsea face a Hakimi fight. Zidane must win the Champions League. There's an Upper Meccano update and a transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes. As I'm your host, Matt Froelich, you are the one footballers, and this is the Daily News. I say transfer roundup rather oddly because basically this whole thing is a transfer roundup. As you know, the transfer window shut yesterday at all sorts of hours and a few deals were done very last minute, including Liverpool running around like a headless chicken looking for a new centre-back. It all makes a lot more sense because Jurgen Klopp revealed that Jean Matip will miss the rest of the season with some ankle ligament damage. So they knew they had to go out and buy another centre-back anyway, but this only made the problem worse. Along with Joe Gomez and most likely Virgil van Dijk, though he may return before the end of the season, they're going to be without their first three choice centre-backs for the rest of the campaign. So yesterday they went out and paid a few million pounds to bring in Preston's Ben Davis and bought in Ozan Kabak on a loan from Schalke with an option to buy in the summer. This represents a very, very good piece of business for Liverpool. First off, I think Ben Davis is going to be sat on the bench for most of it. I mean, they've also got Nat Phillips and Nico Williams as well, who could both play in the centre-back position and if they weren't good enough so they had to go and buy Davis, he's obviously above them in the pecking order, but he's also not as good as the rest of the centre-backs they could potentially have, so I'm not sure how much game time he will get, especially when the likes of Fabinho sorry, are back. But in the case of Kabak, they've signed a very good youngster with a lot of potential. He hasn't exactly had it easy, especially playing at Schalke the last six months, but also at Stuttgart, he's moved around a lot, he's had a lot of different coaches. There's potential there. They've signed him on a six-month loan with an option to buy. So if it turns out he's not very good, they can just send it back. And if it turns out he is very good, they can pay 18 million euros, which is absolutely peanuts in today's transfer market, and bring him in on a permanent deal. This looks like a very good piece of business for them. Elsewhere, and Sepp Vandenberg, the young defender at Liverpool, has moved to Preston as part of the deal which takes Ben Davis to Anfield. And Minamino, the player who didn't really get much game time under Jurgen Klopp, has realised the only way to get into the Liverpool team is to play for Southampton first. So he's gone on a loan deal to Ralph Hasenhutl's side. Alongside this, there was a bid for Caleta Carr from Marseille and Leon's Marcelo, which didn't go through at the last. But I think overall, Liverpool fans will be pretty happy with the fact they managed to get two defenders in. Joshua King is back in the Premier League after signing for Everton. Josh Madger has joined Fulham from Bordeaux. Both Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Joe Willock have left Arsenal for first-team loans in the Premier League. Okay, Kushlu has joined West Brom. And last but not least, £4 million is the amount that Brighton have paid for Moses Casado. Moving on, though, we're already talking about some potential transfers that could happen in the future. That is for Ashraf Hakimi. Now, you're probably thinking, hold on, he just left Real Madrid for Inter Milan. Yes, he did. But so good has his form been with Antonio Conte side that apparently Manchester City are still interested in bringing him in in the summer. They will face a bit of a battle from the likes of Chelsea and Arsenal. Chelsea were interested in last summer. But out of all those teams, I can see Manchester City leading the race if if he were to leave. This is obviously a massive if. He's been so good that I don't think Antonio Conte is going to want to let him go. I'm not even sure Hakimi would want to leave, depending on where Inter Milan finished the season. And on top of all this, it's going to take a hell of a lot of money to prize him away from the club. When it comes to the potential options, the three that I've named in the Premier League, I don't think Arsenal have got the money to spend big on Hakimi. It's going to be over 50 million. I don't think Chelsea need him, especially with the likes of Reese James coming through at right back and Aspel Coeta back in the squad. So for Manchester City, this deal kind of fits. They've got Carl Walker there, who I believe is 30 now, and they haven't really got much of a backup for when he's out of the squad. Aside from, of course, Jao Cancelo, but he seems to be playing at left back a little bit more often. I think Hakimi would actually be a very, very good fit in Guardiola's side. But talking of Hakimi's former club, Real Madrid, and Zindi Zidane knows what he must do to avoid facing the sack, and that is win the Champions League. Not that difficult, right? Apparently, he's been tasked with bringing home Real Madrid's 14th European crown if he is to save his bacon. Well, his bacon, not quite literally, because he's under a little bit of pressure. Recent results in the last few weeks have been nothing short of terrible. The 10 points behind Lee Ligas and City rivals Atletico Madrid, who have a game in hand on Zidane's men, they've been knocked out of the Copa del Rey and they face Atalanta in the last 16 of the Champions League. This represents Zidane's final chance because in all honesty it's not really been a good comeback for him. Yes they won La Liga last season it's the only trophy they won but since Cristiano Ronaldo left the club they failed to make it past the last 16 of the Champions League. As I say aside from that Corona um, sort of intruding season last year where they won La Liga 
Zidane's men haven't really been up to much, even their style of play has been a little bit questionable. Zidane seems to keep the faith with the same 13 or 14 players. He's uh, really alienated a lot of players in the squad. Some have gone out on loan. He doesn't really look, be looking to the future for Real Madrid, sending the likes of Jovic and Odegaard out on loan. On top of all this, apparently, according to reports, Zidane already knows what's going to happen in the summer. Whether he wins on the pitch or doesn't, he knows whether he's going to leave or stay, and this absolutely reeks of what happened in 2018. There's obviously something going on behind the scenes where Zidane just cannot get on with the board, with the players, who knows what's going on. When he and Ronaldo left at the back end of 2018 after winning that third Champions League title in a row, it just seemed like a good point to close the chapter and move on. Then he came back and, well, it looks like Real Madrid may be facing yet another transitional season again. Next up then, Antu Diet Upamecano. And yes, there's still transfer talk about him because he did not move anywhere yesterday. But only enough though, this transfer update is coming from Bayern Munich. He plays for Leipzig, but Bayern Munich is spilling the beans on his transfer future. It's well known, right, that 38 million euros is the release clause that will get a Diet Upamecano in the summer. Sorry, 38 million pounds. I think it's about 44 million euros. Anyway, so Carl Heinz Romanega, who's been talking with both Leipzig and with Diet Upamecano's agent, has said that both Chelsea and Liverpool are interested in bringing him in in the summer. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but normally another club doesn't talk about another player that's not theirs. But you don't talk about other clubs that are interested in another player which isn't yours. This seems like a little bit bizarre. Anyway, I'm not sure how Liverpool and Chelsea, how happy they'll be that someone else has pretty much told their transfer plans to half of the media. But anyway, there's going to be a big battle on for the defender. Bayern Munich, of course, are set to lose David Alaba on a free transfer in the summer and signing from within the Bundesliga, simultaneously strengthening themselves and weakening a title opponent in RB Leipzig. That's just such a Bayern Munich move, so I wouldn't be surprised if you see the French international join their ranks in the summer. So lastly then, a quick run up of the transfer news, as if the rest of this daily wasn't all transfer news, but a few deals from yesterday. Sami Khedira has returned to the Bundesliga with head to Berlin. Asuma Idrissi has left Sevilla and joined Ajax on loan. Daniel Rugani has joined Cagliari on loan from Juventus. Jean-Claude Todibo has joined Nice on loan from Barcelona. And lastly but not least, we could be seeing the first ever female manager in men's professional football in England. Some amazing news is apparently AFC Wimbledon are toying with the idea of bringing in Chelsea women's first team boss Emma Hayes. That's all for me for today then. Make sure you let me know your thoughts on all the transfers from your club in the comment section below check out everything else we've got going on in one football and until next time i will see you guys later